Oh yeah, Mr. Gee is the Link's channel, but uh, you know, we're just testing. Okay, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Isaac. I'll be your instructor for today. Uh, if you didn't sign up for this and you just joined the VC because like a bunch of people were inside, right? Uh, yeah, welcome to listen, but you have to sign up uh, on the website to get the lucky draw benefits at the end. So you should go do that as well. Uh, if you're not already sure what this workshop is, we're going to spend about an hour and a half learning about the basics of JavaScript, uh, which is the language most commonly used for web development. Uh, if you attended the workshop yesterday on said topic, uh, then uh, the things covered in this one will effectively supplement the knowledge learned there. But if not, you'll still be able to learn plenty because I won't be going through uh, the JavaScript in web development. I'll, I'll just be going through pure JavaScript and a bit about Node.js. So uh, the goal of the workshop right, is to build a basic Discord bot uh, that can respond to your messages. Uh, so before we get into this, right, I'm going to assume that uh, you have basic knowledge on any programming language, be it Python, C++, Visual Basic, or anything else that you've learned. Uh, that being said, if you don't understand something or if you've lost track, do either unmute your mic and say something like, oh, sorry for interrupting, but I'm still not sure what this keyword does, or ask a question in the workshop channel, workshop help channel, and uh, I'll be more happy to help you out. I think we have search out helping us as well. So I'm, I'm also going to be assuming you have a Discord account because we are making a Discord bot. And if you don't, uh, I don't know how you are here. So that aside, let's start with the uh, very basics of JavaScript. Uh, so for this workshop, right, you'll be using an online JavaScript ID called uh, Replit, which allows you to write and run uh, JavaScript code. So uh, I'll send a link in the workshop help chat for the, the link to Replit. So can all of you go access that first? After you are in, right, you should see something like this on screen. Wait, can you all see? Like, can someone just unmute the mic and tell me if like, you are looking? Yes. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, so once everyone is here, right, on the top right hand corner or somewhere, wait, actually, let me just go to the same URL. Yeah, so on the top right hand corner, right, there should be something called a new repo. And you can click on it. And what you do is you search for JavaScript as your language. Then you can name it anything. So uh, make sure you select the JavaScript and press uh, create repo. Now after that, you should load over here. So what you can do is you can type your code here and the output should appear on this side of the screen. And you can look at your files here. We only have one file, which is a JavaScript file. All right. Uh, after everyone has, after everyone has uh, created your repo, right? Can you copy the URL and paste the link inside? Replit users links JavaScript. Like over here. So that it can monitor your progress as you go along to make sure like you're not you're not like lagging behind or anything. Uh, so what we'll be using this Replit for, right? Uh, this repo for is uh, we'll be using it to test like JavaScript code. So we'll be using it to learn basic JavaScript syntax. But not only that, um, we'll actually be building the Discord bot on the repo itself. Like we'll, we'll be running the Discord bot on the repo. Okay. Uh, has anyone still not? Uh, created it, or is anyone still lost on what to do? You can just unmute your mic and ask. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm still lost. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, where where are you now? Like, are you at the rep rapid page or? Uh, I I just joined, so I I don't. Oh, know. you just joined. Okay. Uh, could you go to? Like, okay. In in workshop help, right? You can see this link to rapid, right? Can you like click uh, it? Okay. Okay. And then you go to, uh, you click on new repo. Uh, and you select JavaScript as your language. You type in JavaScript, then you select this one. Okay. Yeah. Then you press create. create. Yeah. Then after that, you can copy the URL, copy and 
the URL and paste it in the channel. Oh. Okay, nice. Does anyone else have any other problems? Okay, no, right? Then, okay, we'll, we'll just assume everyone has this up already. Uh, so, uh, let's start. Let's just start coding. So, we're gonna go through uh, variables first. Wow, this is slow. Hold on a sec. Okay, so, uh, let's go through variables first. To initialize a variable, we can do it almost exactly like Python. We can type our variable name. Uh, it can be any name. In this case, I'll just name it x. And we can assign a value to it using the assignment operator equals. So we can say x equals 8. Uh, but here's where JavaScript is different. Uh, when initializing a variable or when creating a variable for the first time, you must explicitly tell the compiler that you're creating it. So to do so, right, you have to add the keyword let behind the variable name which tells the compiler that you are creating this variable, in this case, x. Uh, once x has been created, right, you don't need to create it again. So you can just like reassign it without using the word let. So it's only for the first time. So uh, what we do here, right, is we are creating a variable called x and we are assigning a value of 8 to it. But over here, we are reassigning a value of 5 to the same variable x. Right, but uh, we want to see this change from 8 to 5. So what you can do is uh, we can print it out to the console. We can output it to the console over here. But in JavaScript, right, we, do, like, we don't use print, the print function in Python. Like if you do this, right, an error will, an error will generate because uh, JavaScript doesn't understand what this word is. So uh, in JavaScript, right, the way to output to the console is actually a function called console.log console.log and you can type in whatever you want to output in the brackets here. So when you run this, you can see uh, that the value of 5 has been outputted because, well, x is 5. So we initialize a variable called x, assign a value of 8 to it, we reassign a value of 5, and then we output it to the console. Since we can reassign the value of x, we can call x a mutable variable, mutable, meaning we can change it, right? But let's say we wanted to store uh, some value that cannot be changed. Uh, let's say the value of acceleration due to gravity on Earth, right? Which is, is 9.81 or 10, or if you are approximating. Uh, so if you're near the surface of the Earth, right? Obviously, the acceleration due to gravity doesn't change, and so neither should the variable. So let's say that x, we rename x to gravity, acceleration, right? So gravity acceleration shouldn't change. So uh, in JavaScript, right, we, we call these unchanged variables immutable. And there's a way to make sure that this value doesn't change, is to change the word let to const, which means constant. So the keyword const here, right, will tell the compiler that this value, initially set to 9.81, shouldn't be reassigned any other value besides 9.81. So we can see now that gravity A is an immutable variable. So if we try to run it now, right? An error will generate, right? Because you are assigning something to a constant variable. So this, this is just to prevent like any mistakes. Let's say that you had something that you don't want to change but then you change it by accident, then the compiler will tell you that, oh, uh, are, you, are you sure you want to change this? Then you can better spot errors in your code that way. So it's a very good uh, tool to use. Uh, variables in JavaScript can hold many different data types, like uh, integers, which are whole numbers, uh, float, uh, whole numbers like 9, 10, floats, like anything with decimal point. Um, we, it can hold strings, which are text values. 
like this, like with quotation marks around them. And objects which hold a collection of attributes. So we'll go through each of these and what you can do with them in detail. Uh, the first data type we'll look at is the integer, the whole numbers, right? You can add them to plus two, which will be, uh, which will be equal to four. So if we output this, we can see that the output is four. Uh, we can multiply them. So two times two, this should also be equal to four. Yeah. So uh, integers are very standard across programming languages. So we will not go through them too much into the too much in detail. Uh, we also have arrays in JavaScript. Uh, we store a collection of values, and like this. So to act to initialize an array, what we can do is let me change change this to let. Uh, we can type in square brackets on the right side of the assignment operator. And we can type in the elements in the array separated by commas. So let's say we wanted uh, the array to have 1, 5, 10, 15, for example. Right? So this array, uh, we'll call it x, will hold all these values. And what we can do is we can access the ith value of the array starting from 0 by typing the array name, which is x followed by square brackets, and then the index that you want to access. So if I wanted to access 1, I would type in 0. If you want to access 5, 5 is the first position starting from 0, right? 0, 1. So then I'll put 1 over here. So this should output 5. So likewise, right? If I want to output 15, if I wanted to access the, the third element starting from 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, I would just type in x. Uh, square bracket 3, and you'll output the third element, which is 15. So uh, we can also store strings into variables, uh, which is text. And this is very important in our case when you're making a Discord bot, because uh, for Discord bot, right, the user commands are taken in as string values. So uh, we can use many different formatting methods on strings, and I'll go through three of them in detail, because they'll be the ones we will use for our Discord bot. So strings can be, uh, strings are always surrounded by quotation marks and you can type in anything you want in them, including spaces, play game. And we can console log X and you can see that play game gets uploaded to the console. So play game is a string, X is a string. Uh, okay, so first, right, let's go through what a basic uh, Discord bot command has. So every command, right, will start with a key symbol or key symbols, which signals to the bot, uh, this message is meant for you, right? Ideally, the symbol should be unique because you don't want people to trigger the bot uh, during casual conversation by accident. So uh, in the case of the building blocks uh, Discord bot, right, we use N as the keyword, but uh, you can use anything. You can use like hash or you can use uh, uh, add. Or, or something, I don't know. Uh, in this case, we'll just use add. All right, and let's change this to the message of the user. So besides the key symbol, uh, there's also a keyword, which, is, which instructs the bot to do something. So if the keyword is help, for example, uh, the, the bot will reply with a list of commands that you can do or what the bot is about. So, yeah, the keyword is basically an instruction to the bot, the main instruction. Lastly, after the keyword, there are some arguments that you can provide as well. So looking at the building blocks bot, for example, I can start off with the key symbol N. Then I can type in the keyword committees. And then I can type in an argument, let's say cosmology. And what this will do, right, is it takes in the argument committees. It, it takes in the argument cosmology and it will return information about the argument, right? So you can change the argument. Let's say I wanted to know more about workshop. Then uh, it will respond with more information about workshop. If I wanted information on baking, then it will return information about baking. So the argument is just uh, 
parameters on like what you want the bot to return. Yeah, uh, is anyone confused so far? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Okay, so uh, if we want to process a user message, we have to take in all these three individual segments as separate components. So the key symbol should be taken separately. The keyword should be taken separately and the argument should be taken separately. So we have to split all of them uh, into three distinct components and we'll do that using string formatting. So let's say our key symbol was N for the bot and the keyword is help. And let's say I needed help about a particular function, let's say date, right? So what this will do is it will ask the bot for help about uh, you know, what at date does, for example, help about what at date does, or something like that. And at date can be like another command. So uh, first, we store the user variable, the user message in a variable called message. All right, the first thing you want to do is to check if the message starts with the key symbol. If, it's, if it doesn't start with the key symbol, then uh, there's no point in analyzing it because it's not for the bot to read. So uh, we can do this by typing the string name, uh, message, uh, followed by dot starts with, and inside the bracket, we put a character, um, n. So this will return true or false depending on whether the string starts with n, at. Sorry, not n. So we can use this true or false value as uh, conditions for our if else statements later. So after we do this, right, what we want to do is we want to remove the, the key symbol, right? Because uh, we want to analyze the keyword and the argument. So what we can do is we can type in the name of the variable that stores the message and we type dot subs, substr or substring for short. So this method, it takes in an integer n and it returns a string that excludes everything before the nth character in the string. So uh, what this means is that if I type in two, it will take the take everything after the second, like after the second uh, index of after the second index of message, including the second index. So uh, in this case, right, cause index start from zero, right? So zero, one, two. So it will start from E and it will return everything after it. So it will be out date. So we can console log this. And you can see it returns out date. So all we have to do, right, is just to uh, return message something one, because we want to ignore the, the character at index zero, which is the key symbol. So once you do this, right, uh, it'll, it, it'll remove the key symbol, basically. So we want to reassign message. Message without symbol. And we can make that equals to message something one. So message without symbol will be a new string that is basically the message without the symbol, hence the name. After this, uh, what we need to do is we have a string containing the keyword and the argument. So we need to split it into two variables, one containing the keyword, one containing the argument. So we can do it by you can, we can do that by using dot split, the dot split method. So we can take in our we can type our variable name here and type dot split. And what the dot split method does, right, is it splits the string into different segments and returns the different segments as an array. So uh, we can split it 
by space, right? Because they are separated by spaces. So we can type message.symbol.split space. And this will return an array containing the individual strings split by space. So in this case, it will be, it will look something like help, comma, take. So this will return an array that looks something like this. So we can just uh, type in array equals to this. So what we can do now is we know that the keyword is the first, the, the first element in the array. So what we can do is we can index the, we can uh, access the element at index zero and that'll be the keyword. So keyword will be equal to array zero. And the argument will be equal to the array at index one. So that's how we can get the keyword and the argument and from the message. Uh, is it okay if I ask what's the purpose of like the, inside the brackets you put the two, the two, I thought, I'm not sure what the two dot dot thing that looks like. You know the online five, the brackets, what's the purpose? Oh, uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why was you don't put the quotation marks? Okay, because um, what dot split does, right, is it takes in what you want it to split by. So let's say, okay, you have a, let's say that you have a string called, um, help me now I want to die. And you want to get the individual words from the string, correct? So you want to split by the space, makes sense? So dot split, right? What the parameter it takes in is what you want it to split by. So I want it to split by space, hence the, the quotation marks followed by a space. If let's say the message was uh, separated by commas, for example, then you would type in a comma instead of a space, right? Because you want it to separate by the comma instead. So dot split just takes in whatever you want it to like split by. The, we call this the delimiter. So like, the delimiter in this case will be commas, but because we don't have commas here, we just have space, the delimiter here will be space. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, thanks. Okay, nice. So we'll change back to space. There's another data type in uh, JavaScript that's equally as important when we are making our Discord bot, and it's called uh, an object. So what we do for objects, right, is we can define them just like any other variable, let object. But in this case, right, objects, you know, arrays start with uh, square brackets, but objects are contained within curly brackets. And what objects do, right, is what objects contain, right, is they have multiple attributes that each contain a value. We call this key value pairs. So we can have multiple keys which map to multiple values. It's, it's easier if I just show you. So, okay, let's say, um, let's say our message is not help date anymore, right? Because a message on Discord has many attributes, right? Like what it contains, for example, what it contains, who wrote the message, when the message was sent, which channel the message was sent from, sent, sent to. All these values are part of the message, right? So we can create an object called message, which contains the, uh, the text, like what the message has. So in this case, it will be at help date, right? So we have, a, we have a key called text, and then we put a colon and we map it out to a value which is a string containing help date, at help date. We can have multiple of these attributes in a single object by separating them with commas. So we, it has a text, it has a channel, because each message is sent in a, you know, in a specific channel. So the channel can be 
uh, I don't know, workshop help. Workshop help. Right, then we uh, separate with a comma. Then we can also contain the author of the message, right? Because each message is written by someone. So we can say author. And then we map it out to Isaac, for example, like DHS Isaac, who is the person who wrote the message. Then we can have like a date, for example. Uh, two, one, two, I don't know. Okay, uh, the, does everyone un understand? Does everyone understand like how to declare, uh, define an object? Like, and what objects contain? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yo, yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, so are uh, objects just like dictionaries in Python? Ah, uh, yeah, basically dictionaries. Okay, very good. <laughs> And so, okay, if you know what uh, objects are, you want to know how to access stuff inside. Let's say I wanted to know what the message text was. How am I supposed to know this? Well, uh, for objects in JavaScript, right, what we can do is we can use dot notation. And what that means is we can type in the name of the object and we type in a dot and the name of the key that we want to access the value from. So, if you wanted to access the text of the message, we can type in message.text. And if we output this to a console, console.log, we can see that it's, it shows at help date, which is the text of the message. But what if I wanted to know who wrote the message? I can type in message.author. And you tell me that it was written by DHS Isaac. So objects are very useful uh, for everything that has more than one attribute. For anything that has more than one attribute. And this is especially useful in our Discord bot because user messages are all objects. So it's very useful to know. It's, it's absolutely necessary to know. So now that we know what's all right, we can write a simple algorithm that takes in a command made by a user and does something depending on the command. Right, so uh, knowing how to do that is very simple. If the user command is equal to a command keyword, that command will execute. Otherwise, it says something like command not recognized. For that, we can use conditionals, which are uh, also known as if-else statements. In JavaScript, if else statements are quite similar to Python, you start by using the keyword if and then type a condition. So if message.text. Okay, wait, first let's 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 uh, pass the message.text. Like we, we let's first let's get the keyword and the argument for message.text. So we can do the same thing. Message.text dot uh message without the add, oops, without add. And we can make it message.text dot substring one, right? And then we can uh, get an array uh, containing the keyword and the arguments by simply doing message without add dot split by space, right? But let me just create all these variables. Right, then we can type let the keyword be equal to array at index zero and let the argument be equal to the array at index one. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so let's uh let's analyze the message even further. So if message text starts with which is the which is the thing we learned earlier that returns a boolean value starts with add right. We can start passing in the function. Uh, but here's where uh JavaScript is different from different from uh Python. 
because uh, in Python, you can just write the condition like that and you'll follow it with a colon, correct? But if you run this, right, uh, JavaScript won't know what you're talking about. So what you have to do in JavaScript, right, is you have to wrap the condition in uh, brackets like this. You have to wrap the condition in brackets. You cannot just leave it out in the open. All right. And in Python, we will follow this with a colon. But in JavaScript, we, we don't do that. And in a lot of other languages, we don't do that, actually. Uh, instead, right, what we do is we type uh, curly brackets. And whatever is inside the curly brackets will be in the if block. Right. For Python, is on the same indentation level. But in JavaScript, right, the whatever runs, whatever is in this uh, curly bracket will run. So what we can do is we can define the else in the same way. Else, then we can put the curly brackets like that. Right, so it's quite different from Python. So this is quite important to know. So uh, let's just pass this through real quick. So if message, if the message dot text starts with at, we know that it's directed to the bot. So then we can start passing our, our message. Makes sense. If not, then we can go, we, we don't need to do anything, right? Or continue, right? Because uh, if it doesn't start with add, it's probably not meant for the bot anyway. So we don't need to do anything if it doesn't start with it the key symbol. But if it does, right, we can start getting the keyword and the argument from it. And we can uh, use a nested if statement. So if the keyword is equal to uh, help, then we can, you know, we can carry out uh, whatever we need here. So console.log uh, help. Right. Oh. Okay. We'll just we'll just remove this else statement. Yeah, so it 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 outputs help. But we also have this argument, right? We also have an argument. So if the keyword equals the help, right, we also have to analyze the arguments that come with it. So we have to nest another if statement inside. If argument equals to a date, for example, like in this, in this example, then we can uh, lock the help for the, for the uh, date, the date command. So con we can console lock uh, at date type at date to find the date, right? But otherwise, it uh, either the the user didn't type any argument at all, or the user type something other than date. We can say we can lock uh, sorry. What are you trying to say? So if the message contains a help date, right? You, the bot will respond with type add date to find the date. But if we just ask for general help, right? Then the bot will say, sorry, what are you trying to say? So it's as simple as that. Does anyone, does, does everyone get this so far? Okay, no response. I'm assuming that, yes? Yeah, okay. Okay, nice. So, the bot just relies on very, very, very simple logic like this. But, uh, here's where it, it gets quite confusing because if the bot has a lot and a lot and a lot of key, possible keywords for you to type, let's say, um, like commercial Discord bots out there. They have a lot and a lot of keywords that you can use. 
And if you keep typing if statements into this one block, right, it will get very, very confusing to read and it will get very confusing to maintain as well. So what we can do, right, is we can use, we can instead use functions to make our code cleaner and easier to read. So uh, I'm going to go through what functions are now. So in JavaScript, right, what functions are uh, is uh, a recipe. So recipes have ingredients and they do stuff to the ingredients to yield a final result. Functions are basically the same thing. They take in some values, uh, we call them parameters. We do stuff with the values and then we return a new value. So uh, in this case, right, what will our parameters be? Our parameters will obviously be the message and the argument. So we can describe a function here. We can call the function, uh, we can call the function, uh, I don't know, uh, help command, like that. And then functions are followed by brackets. And whatever parameters you want to put inside uh, will be inside the, the brackets here, separated by commas. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to take in the message, of course, because we want to you know, analyze the message. And we want to take in the arguments. Right? We don't need to take in a keyword because we've already analyzed the keyword here. So we can take in a key message and we can take in the argument. So we can do this uh, a lot of times. Let's say if we wanted to define add date also. So else if keyword, oh my god else if keyword is equal to date, then we can make a command called date, make a function called date command as well. And we can pass in the same parameters, message and argument. So down here, right, we'll start defining our functions. So in Python, right, functions are defined by the keyword def, which is short for define. But uh, in JavaScript, right, we don't use def because that's confusing. We write function, which is short for function. So we type function, follow our function name. Uh, in this case, we have help command. And we uh, follow it by parentheses, then curly brackets, just like in our if-else statements. So any, everything in this uh, curly brackets is part of our, com uh, is part of our function. Then inside these uh, brackets, after the function name, we can type in the parameters. So our parameters will obviously be message, the message, and the argument. Make sense? Uh, does everyone follow so far? Yes. Okay, nice. So whatever we type in here, right, will be run when this is called. Uh, I'm assuming y'all know like functions in Python, but if you don't, then you can just unmute yourself and then ask. Sorry, but do you have to define the function before it's called? Or in JavaScript, it okay? you can define it before and after. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, what you can do is we can just uh, analyze the message normally. So if you know, if argument equals to a uh, date, then we can console.log type add date for the date. Then else we can console.log type in argument. This. Right, but we also have another function called date command. And let's say the date command, let's say the date command had a few arguments for you to choose from. You can type at date day to find out the day, at date month to find out the month, at date year to find out the year, 
or at date to find out you know the whole the whole shebang the whole date so of course we'll name this date command because we called a date command earlier and if the argument is day we can console log the day we will console log the day right else if uh it, it's not L if uh, in Python we use like L if, but this makes no sense in JavaScript. It's else if. Else if, then we can type in the condition in uh, parentheses if argument is month. Then we type, uh, then we can lock the month. Else if argument is equal to year. Then we'll uh, output the year else we output the full uh, the full thing right so uh, in JavaScript right date there's something called a date object and the date object has various different attributes like the day the month the year and we can use that to our advantage so what we can do is we can define a date object that contains the current date by creating a variable called date or whatever you want it to name it. And we can type the date function, which returns the date. But since the date is an object, right? We have to type new, the keyword new. So every time you are assigning an object returned by a function, you have to type new. Otherwise, if it's not an object, you don't need to do this. Right, earlier, earlier we typed let x equal to 5. This is okay. Why we type let x equal to new 5, right? It will take in this 5 as an object, which, which we don't want. So, but since date is an object, we have to type new. Right? Does, okay, is everyone following so far? JavaScript can be quite confusing sometimes, especially if like you come from Python background. So, does anyone have any problems so far? Wait, can you explain the new part again? Okay. So, uh, date, right? The, this date function returns a date object. And every time we assign an object to a variable, right? That is not explicitly, you know, defined, explicitly mentioned. Then we have to type new. So if we like define everything already, then we don't need to type new for objects. But if the object is coming from a function, then we have to type new. I don't know. Like new new is very new is like rarely used on anything other than than dates. So I don't think you should like I don't know, I don't I, I, I honestly don't think that it's very important to understand at this point. Unless you want to like seriously get into JavaScript, but you don't you don't do this for anything other than the date, it's like especially in web development. So like you can just treat it as a a one of thing for like especially for the the date function. Okay, so uh, if the argument is day, right, you want to cancel out the day. Oh, uh, wait, someone unmuted. Okay, never mind. Uh, so if the argument equals to day, right, what we wanted to do is we wanted to console lock the day. And we can do this by uh, typing get day. We can type the object name, the date object name, dot get date. And we can just, and this will return the day. So you can console log this. And we can run it. Oh, oops. I didn't change the message. Add date, date. 
Eh, what's this? Cannot access date before initialization. Nani? Cannot access date before initialization. So I have to paste in the function. Yeah. Cause this is lag just now. Oh yeah. Oh uh, okay. Uh this is a good this, okay, this is a good um you know time to introduce the what the keyword let actually means. Let defines a function in block scope. What a block is, right, is this uh these curly brackets over here. Everything inside these curly brackets is a block. And what let does, right, is let defines this uh variable in a block and it cannot be accessed like in, in other blocks. Does that, does that make sense? So if you do this, right, it'll work and your output then. But if you type let outside, right, then it won't work. So uh, the output's 10 because today is the 10th of May. And if the argument is month, we can lock month, the, the month. So we do this in a similar way to the day. Date dot get month. Correct. And you'll get the month. So if we type date month, it will output a month. But you might be wondering why why does it output four? Right? Why why does it output four? Uh that's because JavaScript day objects are stupid. And they want to act smart. So they index the months starting from zero. So January is zero. Uh, and February is one. Uh, March is two and so on and so forth. So uh, in order to get the actual month, you know, and bypass JavaScript bullshit, we can add one. We can simply just add one to the integer. And when we run this now, we can see that it returns the actual month which is five, which is, you know, which is corresponding to me, which is now, right? Else if the argument is year, right, we can do the same thing. We can console log the year, date dot get year. Uh, but in this case, right, we don't just have to type get year, we have to type get full year, which returns the full year. Oh, wait, I forgot to change the message again. Right. So we return 2020. Which is the probably the worst year in the decade. I don't know. Because you know the decade just started. But okay. Otherwise, right, we can just send we can just output the date like as a whole. So what we can do is we can console.log date. But we want to output the date as a string. Because if we just output the date, right? It does this weird thing that no one understands, right? So what we can do is we can push the date to a string. We can convert this date object into a string. And we can do that by simply calling the toString method. And what this will do is it will output the date as a string. Oh, uh, but you notice the timing is a bit off. That's because this is GMT plus 0, 0, 0, 0. Singapore is plus 0, 8, I believe. So uh, it, it's not the same as our time. That's because it gets the, the system time from uh, Replit instead of you know, our local computer. Right. So since now that we have all... Okay, wait, is, is everyone following so far? Like if, if you're not following, right, seriously, just uh unmute yourself and just say. Like no one will ridicule you or anything. I'll be very happy to help. Okay, seems like everyone is following. That's great. So now that we have all of this, right? All of this at the ready, we can now create start creating our Discord bot. Uh now this has 
this has almost nothing to do with coding. The next part will just be, you know, set up. So first, right, uh, you have to have a Discord account. If you don't have a Discord account, I don't know why you're here. And I'll send a link in workshop help. So this link, right, will lead you to uh, this page, right? Okay, but you have to log in with your Discord account first. But this link will lead you to this page where you can create your bot. You can start by creating your bot. So uh, Discord is this very nice platform for you to do so. Very, very easy, very, uh, very intuitive platform. So uh, wait, uh, is, everyone, is everyone on this page already? Uh, I sent it in the workshop help. Is there on this page? Like, if you're not, just unmute your mic and say. No? Okay, that's great. So, we're going to start by creating a new application. Uh, if you've just started out, these two shouldn't be there. This one is for the building block stack support bot in the building block server. So, you can click on new application. And you can type in the name of your application. I'm going to name this... Uh, a uh, test bot, right? So after you've created the application, you should see a dashboard here with like the basic client ID, uh, client secret. I'm not gonna show you because it's a secret, but you should, you should, you should have this, right? Does, does anyone not have this page? Everyone has this page? Great. Okay. So. Uh, the next step, right, before we do this, right, is to create a Discord server for you to test the bot in. So we can go to Discord. And to create a new server, you just simply go to the left side. There's a column with all your servers. Scroll all the way down. There should be a plus sign called add a server. Click on it. Press create a server. Name it whatever you want. Oh my. Create a server. Just name it whatever you want bot test, in my case, and just create. No, I don't want you to find anybody. Right? Has everyone created their own server? Yes, right. Okay, good. If you created it, you should automatically get admin privileges, which is what we need to add a bot to our server. Okay, so uh, we go back to the Discord developer portal uh, with the dashboard and everything for our application. Right, and we go down to bot. Like on the side bar, there's this button called there's this button called bot. You can click on it, and you can click on add bot, on the right. Yes. Right. I mean, I'll just name mine. Uh, I don't know, date bot, <laughs> date bot. But you can name yours whatever you want. Also, you can you know choose a profile picture of your bot. I'm just gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna put my picture over there. So uh after you create a bot, you want to add the bot to your server, right? Because the bot can't do anything if it's not in a server. So to do this right. You will need the client ID for your app. So we can go back to general information on the dashboard. And we can see that we have a client ID over here. Right? Does everyone see this? If anyone like cannot see this or cannot follow, uh, just unmute your mic and ask. Okay, but everyone can see the client ID, right? What we have to do now is we have to go to this side. I'll send it in the, the uh, workshop help. We go to this side, but uh, you notice that uh, there's this portion of the URL called ID here, right? Client ID equals ID here. You replace ID here with the you know the client ID of your bot. So in my case, right, it will be I can copy paste this, but instead of ID here, I'll copy my client ID and I'll paste it. Right, this will bring you to this screen. 
if anyone cannot see this screen, it means you've done something wrong. And all you have to do is just unmute yourself and, and ask. Or you can ask in workshop help. Right. Does everyone, does everyone see this? And you should show your bot name over here. If you don't show the correct name, you also did something wrong. Maybe not the correct kind of ID. Okay, but since everyone has this already, we can just select the server that we created. The server I created was bot test. Right. And authorize. I'm not a robot. Bam. And it says authorize. So now if we look back into our, our you know, server, we can see that at the side, our bot is here. Right, but it's offline. Uh, never mind, the code will bring it to life, but uh, currently it's offline. But if you have the bot in your server, you know, you know you've done something right. Does everyone have the bot on their server? On their test server? Okay, since everyone has it on their server already, we can start to give the bot some life, right? So now, okay, we go back to your repo. You already have this chunk of code. We'll just alter the code to make it fit uh, uh, the, the Discord's requirements for a bot. So first, right, we want to start by creating a variable that contains the library that we are going to use for our, for our Discord bot. And we can do that by simply saying cons, cons, because you, you don't want to change it. Discord equals to require. And the package name is called discord.js. So just type this on the first line. Just just add this to your existing uh thing, existing code. Then after that, we want to create a client for the bot to log on to, right? Because the bot has to log on as something. So we'll type in cons client because we also don't want the client to change. And we'll make it equal to new, which means we are setting client as an object, discord dot client, which is a method, right? So once you have these two lines, it's basically set up. So all we have to do now, right, is on the fourth line or on whatever line that comes after, we can do client dot on so what this does, right, is it triggers something when it receives something. So on something happening, it will do something. That's why it's called on. So we want it to be on message. So what this means, right, is that on receiving a message, the client will do something, right? And we can pass the receive message, the message into the block as receive message or whatever you want your variable name to be, right? And then we can pass it with equal sign and arrow sign, and we can create a block, which is curly brackets. So what this is saying is when the client receives a message, it will do something to the receive message and you can call receive message as a variable in this block. That, that's it. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So, okay, first, right, what we want to do is we want to check if the message is sent by the bot because we don't want the bot to respond to its own messages. That's quite stupid. So we can do this by simple uh, conditionals. If and receive message is an object, right? Remember, receive message is an object. If receive message dot author, 
right, we get the person who wrote the message. It's equal to the user of the client, which is the bot client dot user. So if the message author is the same as the bot, we can straight away return. Like we can straight away just, just see it out of there. Cause uh, we, we don't need to analyze it. Cause bots don't, bots don't trigger themselves. That's the recursion and that'll be bad. Else if the receive message dot content, in this case, the, for Discord, the message instead of text, right? The key name is called content, right? So what we can do is we check the content, check if the content starts with the key symbol, dot starts with, which is what we learned uh, just now. And we can type in our key symbol, at. Right, and we can start a block and we can run a function. We can call a function called a uh, process command. Just like that. It's as simple as that. Then, so uh, let me go through what this whole chunk of code means. On receiving a message, the client will pass receive message into this block. And this block will run. If the author of the message is equal to the bot, it will return. Right, because we don't want the bot to, to analyze its own messages. Otherwise, if it starts with the key symbol, we know that it's meant for the bot. And we'll run a fun and we'll call a function called process command. And we can define this process command below process function process command. Right. But for this process command to process the command, it needs to take in receive message as a parameter. So we can type in receive message here to be the parameter. And we can start defining our function. And all we do for this function is we copy the whole chunk of code that we've already written. If in if message text starts with at, right? Because we already did that here. Right. So what we can do is we can take this, everything in if message text starts with at, and just paste it in here. And you just re we can just remove this chunk. Right. Make sure not to remove like help command and date command. The definition for these two functions. Right. So we process the command. Then we, you know, we did the same thing as we did before. But now, right, the message is a bit different. Correct. So what we want to do is we want to change this message text to receive message dot content. Make sense? And since message here is change, we want to change this to receive message and change this to receive message. And we can, you know, make the parameters over here mirror down. So you might be wondering, why are we passing in receive message if all we are analyzing is the argument? That's a very good question. And that is because when you send a message on Discord, you want to send it in a particular channel. But you cannot console log because console log outputs to this console, not Discord. So what we want to do is we want to send the message in a particular channel. But which channel? It should be in the same channel as the receive message was sent. And since receive message has a receive message has an, a key value pair that dictates its uh, the channel it was sent. Receive message dot channel, correct? What we can do is we can use that as the channel to send the message in. Does that make sense? So that you so that you'll respond to the to the guy. 
So all we do is we replace the console log. Oh, I wonder why I deleted this. We can replace the console log with receive message dot channel dot send. Simple as that. And we can replace all the console logs with receive message dot channel receive message dot channel dot send. Right. So let's go through the logic of this code one more time. I'll receive a message. If the receive message author is equal to the bot, we return. Otherwise, we will oh, rapid auto save. Give you a moment. Okay, so I wonder why I spelled it wrongly. Okay, so otherwise, if the receive message content starts with the key symbol, right, we'll process the command. While we're processing the command, we get the keyword and the argument. If the keyword is help, we and the argument is date, we can send information about the date. Otherwise, you can send just a general help thing. Otherwise, if the keyword is date and the argument is day, we send the day. Otherwise, if the argument is month, we send a month, year, we send a year. Otherwise, we send the whole thing. Right? So now, right, our bot is almost done. We just have to type one more line of code. And that one more line is for the bot to log in. We can simply do that by client dot login. And in the in the parentheses, it should be a string representing the bot token. And what the bot token is, is you can you go back to the Discord developer portal, back to your uh, application, and click on bot. There should be a token here, right? Token, click to review token. And uh, this token is very, like I'm just gonna say now, this token is very risky to give to other people. Because if you give the token to other people, right, other people can do stuff to your bot. Other people can log in as your bot. And uh, if your bot is like some, some super, super secret, don't know what, then uh, you probably shouldn't do, you probably shouldn't spread the token to other people. Because they can change the code and you know, run their code as your bot. Uh, but I don't care. Because this is a test bot. So I'm just gonna show you all of you the the you know the bot token. But this this should depend on you know what your bot is. This should depend on your bot token, which is different from my bot token, obviously. So after you have all of this, right? Does does anyone not have all of this? Or has anyone lost halfway? No, right? Everyone's okay, right? All you have to do now is click run. And you, and you just wait. Once you see promise pending, right? You can go check back to your Discord. Uh, And you can see that the bot is online. Wow. Is anyone's bot not online? Uh, wait, let me go check the workshop help. Is anyone's bot not online? Everyone's bot is online, correct? Okay, if everyone's bot is online, right? What you can do is you can start sending commands to the bot. So we can type add, F. we can type add help date and the test bot will you know send the you will reply you type edit for the date 
Alright, and we can type help. Thanks. Why is it sending twice? Ah? Is so wait, why is it sending twice? Is someone was using my token? Oh wait, by by your sending once, right? It, okay, if yours are sending once, then then it should be okay. I'm not sure why mine is sending twice, but you know it's the same thing. Then, uh, if we want the date, uh, we remember that we, uh, made it so that we can type in at date and then followed by an argument. Let's say day, and you return ten, right? Oh, now it's working. Date month, and you return five. Date. Uh, year. So and we return 2020. 2,200 to 4,000. Junior nurses uh, may be lower. Wait, sorry, what? And the average is 2,570. Wait. That's pretty uh, low, eh. Huh? Sorry, wait, 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 wait. wait. Is, that, is that directed to me or? Uh, the, the nurses pay are really low. The nurses pay? Yeah. Wait, for, for what? Okay, wait, I'm very confused right now. Okay, you know what? Uh, okay, and, and we can type at date. Uh, to simply return the whole date. The, the whole date, right? But we realized that, okay, first of all, it's running on Reflit. So, you know, it's GMT. Right, we want it to be SGT, Singapore time. What we can do is we can... Okay, and there's one more problem. That, uh, Replit, is, Replit refreshes like every one hour. So when it refreshes, right, the bot will just stop running. Right, which is not what you want. You want the bot to run for you know, as long as it can. So what you can do, right, is you can host the bot locally instead of hosting the bot on Replit. Right, and I'll show you how to do that now in the next about 15 minutes or so. So, okay, first, right, you need to install Node.js. If y'all don't have Node.js installed, oh my god, what the heck? All right. Uh, I'll send the, the link to download Node.js in workshop help. Y'all can spend time downloading it. Uh, but if y'all already have Node.js, then okay, it should be fine. Uh, like after, once you've finished downloading Node.js, right? Can you just like react with uh, I don't know, uh, this. Uh, stupid question, but how do you read? How do, what's the command to redo in uh, Replit? Uh? Do, sorry? What's, what's the command to redo on Replit? Like, undo, redo, etc. Can't find it. Oh, uh, as in, oh, uh, control Z, control Y, I think. Yeah, uh, let, me, let me try out. S, control Z, control Y. Uh, yeah. Alright, thanks. No problem. Actually, yeah, the one I think is not uh, ah, wait, what? not unique to Replit, it's a... Uh, ah, yeah, it's, it's global. Uh. It's across quite a lot of platforms. Uh, well, after you finish downloading you know, JS, just react. I'll... Check in a Okay, after uh, you 
download Node.js, right, you should be able to host your bot on your local machine, uh, whether you are, you are using a laptop or whatever. And uh, what you can do is you can take what you learn from this workshop, right, and just change it so to fit like. Let's say I created a new server and the server is like some, I don't know, some like Minecraft server, Hypixel, don't know what. And you know, you want, you want the bot to like share information about Hypixel or like what, what the stuff you can do there. I don't know, bit more stuff that even exists. I don't know. So like what you can do is, you know, you can take in commands for each of the different uh, games that you can play there, mini games that you can play there. And you know, uh, Help the help the members on the Discord server. Like uh, for example, like what I did for the building blocks bot, right? Was uh, you can type like at help and help, and then you can like I don't know, you can do all this stuff, uh, and you can do like personalized help, so. And you can type and help. I want to die. And then and then you 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 do this. And your ping is which is quite funny, I think. Comedy comedy genius. Okay, wait, has everyone downloaded note? Has anyone not downloaded note or not able to download? Uh, can you unmute yourself? Like if you don't have it yet. Okay, if everyone has it now, just continue. So 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 uh what we can do now is we can instead of uh typing this on Replit, we can create a local file, local JavaScript uh source file, and we can type the code there. So we can create a directory. We can just uh, we can just create a directory called uh, I don't know why we want create a folder called bot 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 right. You you can name it whatever you want. Just re just make the seven just just make the folder name you know easy to type, right. And we create a new file. We create a new text document. Right. Can, you, can, can everyone do this? Can everyone create a folder and create a text file in that folder? If you can't, if you can't do this, you just unmute yourself and ask for help. Or you can ask in workshop help. Oh, still installing. Okay. okay. Then, then you can do the you can do the folder thing first, right? Does everyone have a text file in a folder? Should be quite simple to do. Oh, by the way, you need oh, Node JS uh eight point zero point zero on newer, but I I but now it's like now it's already like twelve, yeah. Now it's already like twelve, so I think it should be fine. So once you have this text file, right, you can rename it something.js. So a uh, bot.js. Oh, make sure, make sure that you can see the extension, by the way. Like, make sure that your text document, right, .txt is there. Make sure that .txt is there. If, if it's not there, right, what you can do is, I don't know for Mac, I, I don't know for Mac what you do, uh, but I believe for, for Windows, you can click view. You can check the box that says file name extension. All right. After you do that, you can rename bot and you can change the TXT to JS. So it should be something.js. And when you click, there will be a warning. Ignore the warning. And you have a JS file. You have a JavaScript source file. You can open the source file with uh any code editor that you have, uh, also 
uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code. If anyone doesn't have a code editor, could you please tell me? Like everyone has a code editor, correct? That can be used to, you know, open JavaScript. Right, if, if you don't have, just ask in the workshop help or un unmute. Then can give you other options. Yeah, can I give you a quick one to install? Okay, um, you actually don't need to install. What I do, right, is you rename back to TXT. You rename back to TXT. Then you copy and paste the, the JavaScript code into the text file like that. And save, control S to save. After you do that, right, you rename back to JS, spot.js. You change the extension again. Then we open it, right? Everything should be there. So you just rename, rename it to text. Use Notepad as your editor, then change it back to JS. Uh, that will work as well. That will, very simple. You don't need to download anything. Uh, I guess I get an error. Uh, oh, Windows, sorry. What? Windows. I think Windows script host. Give it error. Windows script host. None is that. Wait. Okay. Can, can you send like a screenshot on in workshop help? Wait, can you download index.js? Can you download this? Can you, can you, oh, oh, you can. Oh, wow, that's great. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, you, you can go to your Rapid, right? Uh, you can go to your wrapper and just click download as zip. Yeah. Then the index.js file will be there. I mean, you could do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, then you can just download the JS file as is. Oh. Yeah. How to show the file extension. Uh okay, you go to on the top, you can see this taskbar, right? You click on view. You click on view. Then at the side, right, there's file name extensions. Then you click on file name extensions. To show the file extensions. What's that? Screen. Yeah, it should be okay if you just download it from Rapper. Uh, you can download it from Rapper, extract, and then just use that folder as, as your folder. Okay. After you have Node.js, and you have the JS file in a folder, or anywhere, what you can do is, does, okay, wait, does, does anyone here don't know how to use command line? Like you don't know what CD is and you don't know what, uh, you nope. don't know. Wait, sorry, what? Nope. Okay. Uh, this will be a good time to learn. So, uh, we are, are you all on a windows machine? Yes. Right. No one use Mac, right? Yeah. Mac is S. So what you do, right? Is you go into whoa, the search whoa. bar and you type you type in PowerShell. And it sh there should an application could come should come out called Windows PowerShell. Right? Do, does everyone have Windows PowerShell? Right, all of you have command line on, right? Okay, uh, if you have a Mac, right, and you don't know what, you don't know how to get the terminal up, right, you just uh, ping DHS Leo in workshop. I think he likes Mac a lot. So you should know what's up. But if you're on Windows, right, just start up PowerShell. Okay, everyone has this already, right? If everyone has this, right, what you do is you go into the folder with the JS file inside this one. Yeah, uh, Power, PowerShell is basically the same as CMD. It's just better in my opinion. Don't 
But CMD is okay also. They are both the... You can do the same things with them. Okay, anyway, after you have your command line open, right? You go to your the phone, the bot JS, and you can see the path here. You should be able to see the path here, correct? Does anyone not see the path to the folder? If everyone can, right? Copy this path and inside your command line, Press CD, CD stands for change directory, and then you copy paste. And you should be, your, direct, your current directory should be in the, should be that. Right, so you type CD. Okay. So now that you are in your in your uh folder, right? If you type ls, you should be able to see that your JS file is inside. Does anyone not see their JS file inside? It means you're in the wrong folder. Everyone can, right? Everyone's falling so far. Now all you have to do, right, if you have no JS installed. Is to type node. Okay, wait, wait. First, stop, stop your wrapper instance. Make sure it's like stop. Okay. After that, right, all you have to do is you have to type node and you type the name of the JS file. So in this case, in my case, it will be bot.js. After you do this, it should work. Oh wait, I uh, forgot something. You have to install. You have to install Discord JS. Okay, wait. Uh, Control C out of there. You type npm. Install. Discord JS. Oh, I missed the dot. Discord JS. Right. Uh, you should get warnings. Uh, if you get warnings, it's fine. Uh, just no error can we? Right after you npm install Discord JS, then you can type node and your file. Right after you do that, uh, it, nothing should appear, but if you go to your server, it should be online. And when it's online, you can type and date uh you can type and date oh add date sorry and it should be in it should be in uh singapore standard time because your machine is uh using singapore standard time so it should give you the exact time in this case uh 17 33 55 because currently it's 5 34 and i send this message at 5 33 Right, is everyone following so far? Does everyone, is everyone at this stage? Just install, npm install Discord JS. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, there, there's there's a space, there's a space in between bot and test. Uh, it's not supposed to be there. They are just supposed to cd into a directory. Like uh, there shouldn't be a space there. It should be like a full path. It should be just a. Path to a folder. Oh wait, what is this? No, no, my folder had a space inside the name. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Then, then you should put uh quotation marks around.
take them as different arguments. Oh, what, what am I saying? Okay. Uh, after everyone has cd into the directory, right? Just type npm install discord.js and type notebot.js and your bot should be online and ready to go. If, if, if everyone uh, can, right, just like react to this message. React to this message if you, if you could send the date. You could type add date or whatever your key symbol is. And it returns the date. Wait, so I was caught up with the power shell thing. Can you explain how to like connect with Discord again? Uh, sorry, what? Power shell? I was, I was held up on the power shell thing. Uh, could you explain how to connect with Discord again? Okay. Uh, have you CD into the directory? Yeah. Okay, type ls and press enter. Is the is the file name there? Is the file there? Yeah. Okay. Type npm space install space discord.js. All right, press enter. Yeah. Oh. No no error, right? No error. No error. Okay. Then type node and your file name.js. Oh, you go check your server. Is it run? Is it run? Is it online? Okay, let's stop. Okay. Yeah, it's online. Okay, it's online, right? Can you send uh, the date command and see if it returns the date in Singapore standard time? I'm not sending anything. Uh, mm, uh, it's not sending anything. Uh. Wait, uh, can you take like a, a screenshot of your development environment? Oh yeah. Um, for the people that that have successfully made the bot, right, and the bot is like responding with the correct shit, then you can just uh leave with uh thank you for your participation in this workshop. Uh cause the workshop is over already. Yeah. Uh thank you for your participation. And uh we feedback. Oh feedback. Correct. Uh does anyone have any uh feedback? Well uh we get uh the error sorted out. Wait, uh, for the guy who's uh thinking, I don't have, I don't have a coding background. What's ID? Uh, integrated development environment. You, you're, you're, you're supposed to have. Which is, which is I think uh, PowerShell. Wait, uh, you're using PowerShell or? I'm, I'm using Power. I the last thing I used was PowerShell. Okay, uh, as in like, just. Take a, just like take a screenshot of what your PowerShell shows. And can you like uh take a picture of your JavaScript code as well? It's, or you just, your, it's just the copy pasted your code. Oh really? Uh? Hmm. Yeah, that could have been the the token. My token. Okay. You the you, you place the, the correct bot token. Right? Yeah, the bot is online on my server. <laughs> Okay, you see there's an error, right? Okay, now it's offline. Good. There's a there's an error. Right, okay, wait, yeah, you look at my stream. You see that it exited because there is a error. Date is not defined. Did you let date equals to new date in the function? Can you go check your code 
and see if there is this line. And it has to be inside the date command, not outside. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't, right? Okay, can you just edit? A date in capital letters. Like that. Yeah. Okay, then you can uh, re-download or something. Then you do the same step. Uh, is it working now? No, I'm trying to. What I do once I once I change directory, the uh, directory, I will show you. Uh, just note then the file name. All right, then you go to your server and test. install this called a JS again. Uh I think it, once you install it then you don't have to install it again. Or or does it say like oh this called JS is not this uh, is, uh cannot find module this called JS. Ah uh, then then npm install this called JS. Yeah so what's the command? Uh npm space install space this called .js. This called .js, yeah. 